Hey friends, how's it going? Uh, it's me, Will, and it's so, so great to see everyone. Uh, I'm so happy to be hanging out with all of you today. I've been watching my friends come on here for weeks and uh, it's made me so jealous of them and so excited uh, for this moment to finally come and to finally get to hang out with all of you. Uh, so let's have some fun. Uh, today, we're gonna take a trip down memory lane to camp's earliest days. And to help us do that, I'm gonna read some poems from this awesome book, I Will Sing Life. Uh, these poems were written by some of camp's very first campers. Um, and they're all amazing and they're all worth sharing. I'm sad I can only share a few with you, uh, but I'm gonna read a few and then you'll also have the chance to write your own if you want to. Uh, does it sound like a plan? I think it sounds pretty good to me. Hey Amy, hey Peter, thanks for actually watching. Hey Bailey, Taylor, so good to see you guys. Thanks, thank you guys so much. Uh, for tuning in. It really means a lot. And yeah, it's just so exciting to hang out with all of you. Hey, Jace. Uh, so while we wait for some more friends to join, um, I think I should take a moment to introduce myself. I know a lot of you might know me, but some of you might not. Um, in case you missed it at the beginning, my name is Will, uh, and I'm lucky enough to be a member of the hospital outreach team down in the, the birthplace of America, uh, the land of, of Wawa's and cheesesteaks, the, the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. Um, and it's uh, just so such an awesome place and a great place to be and to work for camp there is such a dream. Uh, but you might also recognize me from being up at camp in the summer or uh, from a family weekend. I know I've kind of been all over. Um, but as you might already know, or maybe you learned last week uh, from watching our friends in New York who were so awesome and who I definitely think were a tough act to follow, um, the Hospital Outreach Program is uh, this really, really awesome program. We call it HOP. I think that might be a little more fun to say. Um, but it's an awesome program uh, where we bring games, we bring fun crafts, and we bring lots of laughs, uh, usually, usually at my expense, uh, right into the hospitals and into other uh, clinical settings. Um, down at Philly Hop, we get to serve hospitals that are as far as almost 300 miles away from camp, uh, which always blows my mind. Um, but with us, uh, that distance is really just, just a number. Um, not only are we the, the messengers who get to deliver camp's magic to all of our camp friends who we already have in Philadelphia, but we also get to, uh, to bring, to spend a large part of our days bringing hole in the wall, bringing camp to people for the very first time. Uh, it's a huge honor. It's something that I know personally I'll never get sick of. And maybe it's something that uh, you know I'm doing right now. Maybe you're tuning in and you aren't familiar with hole in the wall and you've never heard it before. Um, thanks for the comments on the poster. If anyone knows what movie that's from, I'll be very impressed. Uh, hey, Jesse. Hey, Steph. Um, so I know I keep talking about uh, camp magic and before we dive into the poetry, uh, I thought I'd help us get into a reflective mood by taking a look back at some of uh, my camp mementos. Um, I like to have them all in one place so I know exactly where everything is and I know where to find it if I, uh, you know, just find myself needing some camp love. So, like I said, I keep it in one place. I keep it in this very creatively labeled box. Uh, that way, you know, nothing gets lost. I always know where it is. Uh, do you guys keep your camp stuff in one place where you can always find it? Or uh, maybe if you've never been to camp, you know, do you have a place where all your mementos, all your keepsakes are, someplace that uh, you know, like things will never get misplaced or lost? Um, if you do, let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear about it. Uh, maybe it's a little sturdier than a cardboard box. Um, but while you think about it, uh, let's see what I got in here. Got uh, an old cabin award. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, at the end of each week at camp, um, everyone in the cabin gets an award. So this is when I was in the purple unit. Um, and I think it was from like three or four years ago that week. I don't know if you guys can read it, even though this handwriting is much, much better than mine. Um, but that week I got the commander in chief award. I don't really remember why I got it, but hey, I'll take it. Uh, let's see what else I have. I have um, oh, some cool stuff uh, from some other different unit colors. This is also from the purple unit. Do you guys have a favorite unit color? Um, or this, I know you guys can't read it, but this has all the red unit cheers written on it. Uh, do you have a favorite unit cheer? I know that uh, my favorite cheer is the Be Incredible cheer. Um, and I laugh because uh, 
I'm actually really, really bad at leading the cheer. Um, to lead the cheer, you have to, uh, I'll let you in on a little secret. To re lead the cheer, you have to like clap in rhythm to a beat, and I am terrible at clapping. Um, I'll spare your eyes a demonstration, but take my word for it. You know, I usually when I'm doing it, I like to look at someone and just kind of like try to match their movements. Um, and yeah, I know you're probably thinking, how could someone be bad at clapping or not know how to clap? But if you don't believe me, I'm sure there are plenty of you watching who have witnessed the horror of me trying to clap before um, and can say I'm telling the truth. Uh, but yeah, the Be Incredible Cheer is my favorite cheer. Let's see. Simone, your favorite's the red unit. Yeah, mine too. Kelly, purple hair. That's great. Julie, Y-E-L-L-O -L -L -O is a classic. All, all great, great stuff, guys. Let's see. I have time for one more. What do I have in here? Lots of good stuff. Ah, yeah. So uh, this pin is really special to me. Um, hold it up so you can see it. Uh, it's one of the pins that they give all the counselors on the last day of the summer. And it reminds me of a really great story, uh, one that brings me a lot of joy that um, I hope brings you a little. And it happened to me on the last day of the summer, the day I got this pin. So I was down at the boathouse with uh, one of my best friends, Bailey, who uh, you might know him as Flip, Flip That Rock Bailey from a few weeks ago. Um, but yeah, anyway, we're, we're sitting at the boathouse, last day of the summer, and we're taking one last shot at uh, catching Weepy, who, as some of you may know, is this humongous fish uh, that lives in the pond at camp. And of course, it is not going well. Uh, we caught some sunfish, caught some bass, uh, Bailey even hooked me a few times, uh, but we did not catch Weepy. And you know, it's getting late, sun's going down, we're starting to get desperate. So Bailey climbed up on the, the like little wooden railing that's at the edge of the dock at the boathouse. Uh, I think he was trying to like cast his rod a little further or something like that. Um, and even if you've never been to the boathouse at camp, I hope you're saying to yourself right now, it's probably against the rules, Bailey, not a good idea. And you are right. So guess what happened next? I don't think there's a lot of suspense here. Bailey fell right over into the pond. And this is my favorite part. Uh, instead of just climbing right back out or swimming to shore, he wouldn't get out of the pond. Um, you know, he said something about wanting to say hi to a snapping turtle he used to be friends with or something like that. But anyway, we finally had to get our friend McGee, who some of you may know, uh, to grab that gigantic net that they have down at the pond and to scoop him out. Um, it was... It was quite the situation, um, and if you see Bailey hang out in the comments, please tell him to follow the rules next time, because um, yeah, it was, it was not, uh, it was a dangerous situation and could have been avoided, but very funny, very fun to look back on, and you know, this might just, that's why, this might just be like a tiny pin that I keep in a cardboard box, but it has that power to uh, transport me right back to that moment to get me laughing, uh, thinking about how lucky I am to have all the awesome experiences I've had, even the ridiculous ones like Bailey falling in the pond. Um, and yeah, that's why keeping mementos is fun. Um, and I hope you guys have a spot for all your camp stuff or just all of your um, special keepsakes. And yeah, in this case, we tried to catch Weepy, we caught Bailey. Yeah, I know, Jordan, I can't believe Bailey swims in the pond. It's pretty gross. Uh, Bailey definitely needs to shake his bushy tail, you know, I would agree. Oh, it's Bailey. <laughs> I'll let you guys read Bailey's comment for yourselves. Yeah, Steph, next time you're at the boathouse, you gotta try to catch Bailey. I don't know what kind of bait he likes. Uh, I think pepperoni, that's what I've heard. But yeah, so enough about me, uh, I think, and enough about Bailey for sure. Uh, let's get to some poetry. So if you're just joining us, um, my name is Will. I'm with the Hospital Outreach Team in Philadelphia, and today we're gonna to read some poems from this awesome book, I Will Sing Life. Uh, but first, let me tell you a little bit more about the book. Uh, for starters, it was written about camp's very first summer. Does anyone know when that was? And if you don't, I've got some hints, so give me one sec. So, if you don't know when camp's first summer was, it was the same year that the original Land Before Time was released. Those are classics. Um, it was the year that the longest running Broadway musical, Phantom of the Opera, first opened on Broadway. And last but not least, it was the year Taylor Swift was born, minus one. So anyone know what year camp was founded? I know, I know those are some helpful hints that give it away for sure. Um, let's see. Oh, I, I see some of you guys like the book. Yeah, it's my favorite book too, Morgan. Really special. 
1998. That is not right. That is not the year camp was founded. <laughs> Anyone know? Not 98, guys. There we go. Simone, thank you. 1988. Yes, 1988, which, you know, now you know, your camp was founded, your Phantom of the Opera was released, your The Land Before Time was released, and not 1989. That's when Taylor Swift was born. Minus one. So close. So this was written about the summer of 1988. Um, and it was written by uh, two counselors who worked at camp that first summer. Uh, their names are Larry Berger and Dahlia Lithwick. Uh, you might know that we have afternoon programs at camp, uh, like archery, the wood shop, horseback riding, sports and rec. Um, well, uh, Dahlia and Larry ran their own afternoon program for the campers to, you know, write some poetry. And one of the reasons the book is so special to me is that the actual space where they had the program is my favorite spot on all of camp. Uh, it's what I like to call the secret gazebo. Before I tell you where it is, though, uh, do you guys have a favorite spot on camp? Or if you've never been to camp, just like a favorite place in the world where you like to go to, maybe do some reflecting, some hanging out, some reading, um, just any place that makes you happy. I'd love to hear it. But back to mine for a second, the gazebo. It's past the pool at camp if you've ever been there. And then you hang a right and it's down this little tra secret trail that uh, leads right to the pond edge. And if you've never been to the gazebo, to where I'm talking about, don't worry. I know lots of people who've been coming to camp for years and have never been there. Um, but I really hope that you get to the chance to check it out one day because it's really, really cool. Let's see where some of your favorites are. Chelsea, the dining hall right by the snacks. That's great. Kayla, the yellow unit. Not surprised. Uh, Will, the guard shack. Oh, hey, Dahlia. Uh, it's your favorite spot. That's awesome. Um, Sharon, the bench of the pond. Doc's bench. That's a classic. Rob, the boathouse. Really good. Really good. Jesse, the next to the snacks in the in the dining hall. I'm noticing a trend here. Those are all really great answers, guys. It's cool how there's so many different places uh, that people at camp can go and just you know find uh, a nice space to just kick back, relax, and uh, enjoy all the magic of camp. So um, the book follows uh, the lives of seven campers, both like when they're at camp in the summer and then back home. And a lot has changed about camp um, since this was first written, but a lot has stayed the same. Uh, the pictures in here of the boathouse, of arts and crafts, and uh, of other spots on camp would uh, still look really familiar to some of you if you saw them. And not everything is the same, though. Camp used to have a, a pig, apparently. Uh, I know nothing about that, but if anyone watching can shed some light on the pig that used to live at camp, I'm sure <laughs> there are lots of people who would love to know. Morgan, you like pulling through the front gate? Yeah, that's great. Especially like on a nice sunny day. Oh, Gil, it was called Words on the Lake. Okay, Words on the Lake with Dahlia and Larry. That's awesome to know. I've always wondered that. Camp does have the best snacks, Morgan. What are some of your favorites? I'm a huge uh, gummy bear guy. Or not gummy bear, the fruit gummies. I've eaten like four in one day before. Definitely not a good idea. Stick to like one or two. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, uh, no more delays, I promise. Uh, here comes the first poem. So I like to close my eyes when I listen to poems, you know, just to like focus on the words, really just uh, like be transported and be in the moment. Um, but do whatever makes you happy and whatever you feel uh, you feel most comfortable doing. Uh, this poem is by a camper named Paul, and it's called I Walked in the Woods. So close your eyes, kick back, and enjoy. Give me one sec to track down here. All right, so this is called I Walked in the Woods, and it's by Paul. I walked in the woods one day when a little ant started to say, Get off me, you thoughtless human. Your foot is on my butt. Wow. Uh, you know, move over Walt Whitman, uh, out of the way, Robert Frost. Paul the Camper uh, is a poem about nature to just blow those guys out of the water. Um, this poem, you know, it's funny, but it also gets me thinking. Uh, if you were an ant and you were staring up at a big, gigantic human, what do you think you would say? And while you ponder that, feel free to comment and share it if you feel comfortable. Uh, I'm going to reread the poem one more time in case you missed it or in case you need some more inspiration. So this is called I Walked in the Woods by a camper named Paul. I walked in the woods one day when a little ant started to say, get off me, you thoughtless human, your foot is on my butt. Um, so now that I think about it, if I was an ant, little ant staring up at a giant human, uh, I guess it depends. Like, I feel like I'd be afraid they were going to step on me. So maybe I'd say something like pick on someone your own size. Um, but yeah, what do you think you guys would say? Emma, please don't squish me. That's a valid answer. You know, you gotta set the ground rules. Uh, 
Yeah, Bailey, this is a great poem. Definitely reminds me of Emily Dickinson. Um, yeah, but um, it's something to think about. I think Paul does a really great job. I really feel like I'm there. Hey, Krusty, how's it going? Good to see you. Ouch, Lori, yeah. Um, very valid. Hopefully they wouldn't step on you, though. But uh, even if it is, it seems like this is a really strong ant who's kind of like pushing the person off, so good for them. Um, so let's see. Now I have another awesome poem that I want to share with you guys. Uh, this is by a camper named Adam. Um, like I said before, these are all my favorite poems, but uh, this one really does stand out. Um, I believe Adam wrote it when he was around seven, and uh, he's still a really great friend of camp, which uh, I think is so cool. Um, I think it's a great reminder that, you know, your involvement with camp uh, doesn't come to an end when your time, a camper, as your, when your time as a camper ends. Uh, there's plenty of ways to stay connected, to stay involved. Um, and yeah, this is a really awesome poem. So close your eyes, kick back, and listen to The Way You Change Things by Adam. If I am alone, there is a clear and empty blank sky. If I am with you, I see blinking, shining, beautiful stars in my heart. When I am alone in the forest, I see only woods. But when I am with you, I see nature. Last night, you looked like a dancing violet in the wind. <laughs> ah, that's really cool. Um, the, yeah, the poem always, it always gets me thinking about uh, like who's someone in your life uh, who helps you appreciate the little things. Uh, someone who, like the poem says, helps you appreciate nature where before you might have only seen the woods. Um, feel free to share in the comments if you feel, if you feel comfortable, if anyone comes to mind. Um, but to answer that question for myself, uh, someone who jumps out to me is uh, my good friend Patsy. Uh, she's, and I'm sure everyone watching who knows her would agree, would agree with this, she's like a spotlight on a stage that has this remarkable ability to just find you wherever you are and to brighten you up. And uh, it's something that I'm forever grateful for. Um, but while you all think of who that person for yourselves might be, I'm going to read it one more time for you. So let's find it again. This is The Way You Change Things by Adam. If I am alone, there is a clear and empty blank sky. If I am with you, I see blinking, shining, beautiful stars in my heart. When I'm alone in the forest, I see only woods. But when I'm with you, I see nature. Last night, you looked like a dancing violet in the wind. Rob, your mom's that special person for you. That's awesome to hear. Kayla, it is a really beautiful poem, I agree. Seeing some shout outs for Patsy. Savoie suggests my dad, Bill McDonald, honored. Um, yeah, lots of, but it's a great poem. It really gets you thinking about um, who can make a difference in your life. Um, Laura, you said Karen. I'm sure that's great that Karen's a very special person for you. <laughs> um, lots of shout outs to Patsy. Yeah, she's a very, very special person. Hey, Jacob, good to see you. Um, but yeah, hopefully that poem got you reflecting a bit. Um, and yeah, a seven-year-old wrote it. I feel, always blows my mind. Um, and yeah, it's really, really special. And to kind of keep with the theme of seven-year-olds who have wisdom that is way beyond their years, uh, I'm gonna read another poem. And this one really, other than that, needs no introduction. It's really great. Uh, so this is called Wish Poem. And it's by a camper named Sean. Wish Poem. If I could have three wishes, I would wish that there was no polluting, I would wish that there were no weapons. I would wish to have $500. And I would, I would give each of my $100 to my sister, my brother, my mom, my dad, and Lee. Uh, wow. When I, uh, when I read that, I think my mind immediately goes to how awesome it was that um, all of Sean's wishes were to either help others or uh, to help society. Uh, Sean was also really ahead of his time. I mean, like no polluting. Right on, man. Um, but now that you guys see how it's done, I think it'd be fun if we wrote our own poems. So, so grab a pen if you have one, if you just want to type it or type it in the comments. Um, feel free to do that. I'm seeing some other shout outs. Simone, Kyle Smith, yeah, he, he's great. Uh, Gil, yeah, snaps for Sean. He's really, he's really, really cool. So now to write our own poem, you guys heard it, but here I'll show you what the format's gonna look like. And one of my friends is going to comment this in the comment section, too, if you can't read it very well. So to write your own poem, it starts like this. If I could have three wishes, and then you're going to say your three wishes. 
And then make sure your third wish is something that you give to others so that your last line, hey, Pendo, how's it going? Uh, your last line uh, is about who you would give that third wish to. So there, yeah, I see the, the wish poem template right there. So feel free to follow that. Um, if you want to share it after you've written it in the comments, that'd be really awesome. If, if it seems pretty daunting and like this is too much for you, uh, just share your third wish and who you would give it to. Hey, Neil, how's it going? Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think this could be fun. Uh, do some nice mid-afternoon reflecting uh, about what you'd do if you had three wishes. And while you're doing that, I'll read it. I'll read Sean's poem for you one last time uh, so you can hear what, we, what he wished for and maybe get some inspiration for your own wishes. So this is Sean's poem again, wish poem. If I could have three wishes, I would wish that there was no polluting. I would wish that there were no weapons. I would wish to have $500. I would give each of my $100 to my sister, my brother, my dad, my mom, and Lee. Let's see here. Rob, you wish for your nephew to grow up to be able to overcome your fears? Yeah, it's a really great wish. Hey Kyle, good to see you. Um, I think I would wish for my third wish, um, something that I want to give to others, I would wish, especially right now, I would wish to have like, uh, kind of like how Sean divided up the $500 into five ways. I would wish to have a bunch of flowers um, that I could send to all my friends and my family who I'm apart from right now. Uh, I think spring is like a really good time to give flowers as a gift. Um, and I think there's nothing better than uh, opening your door and seeing that someone sent you flowers. So I think that's what I would wish for. Emma, you would wish to catch Weepy. That's what Bailey and I wished for, and it still didn't happen, but maybe you'd have a little more luck than we did. Um, Addie, you would wish for a wallet to give to your other friend, Will. Yeah, that's good. He does, he does love that Velcro wallet, but maybe time for a new one. Uh, Rob, thank you. Very nice. Um, Michelle, wishing for uh, our little ones to grow up in a safer world. I think, uh, I think Sean would definitely approve of that one. That's a, that's a really great wish. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys take a chance uh, to write a poem of your own or just to think back on what you would wish for. Um, yeah, Sean, he's a really, really cool guy. Um, and that's a really great poem. Uh, but everyone, thanks for sticking with me. Um, it's been such a pleasure. Uh, and I'm going to take us out with one last poem. This one is by a teenager named Tina, and it's about something I mentioned before, and that is the last day of the summer at camp. So give me one second to find it. All right, and this poem doesn't have a title, which really makes it deeper. Uh, so it's an untitled poem. Uh, it's by a camper named Tina. Off on the wings of cold winter winds, the sounds of splashing from the children in the pool disappear. The cabin's finally cleaned and the meds finally stopped. As the cars with the last counselors finally leave, camp starts its long wait in silence. It will sit alone through the snow and the wind, waiting to be awakened by the laughter of the children come summer. Uh, I think I probably read that 30 to 50 times. Uh, and each time I read it, I still, uh, I still get chills. Um, it's such a great poem, um, but I also, I think Tina uh, would be really happy to know, and she never could have imagined that uh, today, camp never sits alone. We've got family weekends, we've got camp out, we've got hop, uh, even in tough times like right now, myself and everyone else who, uh, who has the privilege of uh, wearing, wearing the bandit uh, still gets to hang out with you and bring the magic of camp to you. So the spirit of camp never really sleeps. Uh, but for, as for the actual physical place, uh, like Tina said, all it takes is just a little laughter from some children to wake it up. Uh, so whenever that day comes again, uh, you guys bring the laughter, we'll bring some camp love and, uh, it'll be a great time for sure. Thank you so, so much for tuning in today. Uh, it was so great to see all of you. You guys have made my week, made my month. Um, please make sure you come back tomorrow right here at 3.30. Uh, to see my friend Simone. She's got some delicious s'mores mug cakes that are getting me hungry just thinking about them. Uh, so tune in here to learn how to make those. Um, until our paths cross again, uh, please stay safe, wash your hands. Uh, I care about you all immensely. And like the sign at the front gate of camp says, happy trails to you. Take care, everyone, and go Phillies.